Hey everybody, hope you had a great 4th of July break. Welcome back. Give me a quick second for our friends at Beckett Simonon. You know these guys because I keep talking about them. Here's what I don't talk about. They're really comfortable. Let me tell you a quick story. I got married in these beautiful Beckett Simonon shoes on April 20th. It was a lovely affair, and in the weeks leading up to my wedding, my now wife told me, you know, Matt, you should probably wear those shoes around a bit to break them in, right? You have to break in wedding shoes. I didn't break them in. The first time I put them on ever was two hours before I got married. I have sucky feet. It was a disaster waiting to happen, except guess what? It wasn't. It went great and they were comfortable because these dress shoes break in in 15 minutes and I had no foot pain all night. It was a miracle. I love talking about Beckett Simonon and they keep sending me boots and now I have too many boots. I'm going to have to give away some of these boots. So watch my Instagram in July. Hit them up. The link in the description's got you. I love these boots. I love the bags they make. The leather goods are just the jam. And now enjoy this video. What is up, kids? Welcome to Venice Beach, my hometown, and the land of cool electric bicycles. Electric bikes are the new jam here in Venice, and with all these scooters, the birds and limes and jumps, whatever, these are all rentals. They're all subject to all these crazy regulations, but if you own your own electric mobility device, it's pretty much the Wild West. So today, I've got a pair of electric bicycles from Vintage Electric. These things are made right here in California and these go beyond where most electric bicycles stop. This one looks basically like a motorcycle and goes almost fast enough to be a motorcycle. It's on a throttle and this one is their pedal assist model which is really set up for like gravel riding but today we're going to check both of them out with the help of Timmy from the podcast uh, on the Venice bike path. So let's go. This is the vintage electric tracker and Timmy is in front of me in the Vintage Electric Rally. You'll see he is uh, pedaling, but he will pedal like Superman. Timmy, feel free to make any and all passes here. We can be very aggressive. Uh, this one, the one I'm riding, the Tracker, has pedals and they can pedal the bike, although they are not pedal assist. I am throttling the motorcycle, excuse me, bicycle, uh, using a throttle on the lever. This thing weighs about 80 pounds. It's really heavy. It has a uh, 750 watt motor, 750 kilowatt hour, no, 750 watt hour battery. Sorry, I'm still learning the electric things. It's made of all metal, basically and it is heavy and it is solid and it is durable. It is nicer built than most of the motorcycles that I ride. And uh, it has basically beach cruiser gearing. If you run out of battery, you can pedal it. You can get home on the pedals, but it's really meant to be ridden uh, fundamentally like an electric motorcycle. There are five power modes plus a race mode on top and uh, Although I've done the correct things to get to race mode, which theoretically enables a 36 mile an hour top speed, I haven't found any difference when removing the uh, race mode uh, key, which is what you have to do, uh, from just putting it in the top mode five. So it, mode one through mode five are basically what you think they are. One is the slowest, least power. Five is the fastest. On mode five, I can easily cruise on this bike at 30 plus miles an hour, 32, 34 miles an hour. It's getting a little busy. It is July 7th. Five is fast. And on this path, it's kind of like riding MotoGP. Uh, you can scoot past anybody. Do it, Timmy. Be aggressive. Make moves. Yes. Um, this thing has 26 inch wheels with some sort of balloony flat track style tires. There's an optional front suspension, which we don't have. And I frankly really wish we did have it because if there's one complaint I have about this bike, it's that for 5,000 uh, bucks, the ride would greatly be improved with some suspension. I do have uh, hydraulic disc brakes front and rear and the rear brake has regen built into it. How cool is that? 
can just make moves here. Yes. And uh, other than that, the seat is very uh, comfortable. It's a nice leather. The materials are just exceptional. The uh, hand uh, grips are these really beautiful stacked leather discs. Uh, it looks like a wound leather twine, but it's actually these stacked discs and it's amazing. We're gonna have to get around. Boom. Oh boy. On your left. Squirt. This bike is fast enough. I mean, right now we're just cruising it. This is 16. This is half the speed this bike can do. And I'll just, woo, we'll just throttle it up. And here we go. <laughs> There's 24. If I put it in mode two and go flat for like 30 seconds, 24 is my speed. Oh boy. Pretty amazing. It really kind of straddles the line in between bicycle and motorcycle. Except I can ride it in the bike on the bike path. I don't have to ride it in the street. No registration, no insurance, no licensing, straight mobbing. Brakes are really good. <laughs> Straight mobbing. We ought to pull over and wait for Timmy. Okay, downsides, are there a couple? Yes, it is very heavy and God help you if you have to carry it up a flight of stairs. Also, you have to lock it up when you go somewhere. You can't bring these things inside all over the place. So if you have to lock it up, you're gonna be kind of sketched out. Come on, brother. You're gonna be kind of sketched out by uh, the fact that uh, you've got this very expensive thing, you know, locked up outside in an urban area, um, it could get jacked. You need a nice lock, minimum. Also, like I said, for this kind of money, a front shock is a should be mandatory, not optional. Uh, I can't think of any people who actually want to be going 35 miles an hour on a bicycle without a front suspension. That seems like kind of a given to me. Um, but. But, 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 oh man, this thing is fast. Uh, it, they say it has a 50 mile range. It's really like 20 if you ride it like I'm riding it. Um, but 20 is enough for me to get to the, to the uh, office and back. Also, the charger is relatively light, so I can uh, carry the charger and charge it uh, from dead in three hours, uh, normal wall charger but it is a beautifully made piece of art that in many ways feels more like a motorcycle than a bike, except, oh, here we go. Timmy, we're gonna go flat, mode five. Let's do it, brother. There's 26. There's 27. Oh, Timmy's in very good shape. There's 30. 32, woo! <laughs> <laughs> this thing goes, it goes, man, it goes. And you see, you notice how uh, now that we're in Santa Monica, there's no bird scooters around, there's no rental. See, look at the sign here, no electric scooter zone, it's the law. Not us, buddy. We all right. We all right. Wow. These things are super fun. And uh, other than the fact that you have to wear a backpack to carry stuff or get a basket, uh, and you probably should wear a helmet. Wow, look at this guy. Mobbing on the uh, electric unicycle. Um, they're really fun. And as a personal transportation, if you wanna somewhere where you wanna bike to, but you don't wanna be sweaty when you get there, it makes a lot of sense. Like I don't always wanna bike somewhere because I have to carry something or I've, I don't wanna be sweaty the rest of the day. But this gets me there, it gets a car off the roads, it's more or less environmentally friendly, and it's crazy amounts of fun. And you don't need a license, you don't need insurance, you don't need any of that stuff, so you just need a good lock. So on the way back, uh, let me hop on this pedal assist one and uh, see if that's any different. All right, guys, it's bike number two. I sent Timmy on the tracker 
He seems to be enjoying himself up there. And I'm on the rally. This is their gravel setup. It's almost like a mountain bike kind of deal. And uh, it works on tarmac as well, although it has a knobby tire. It has a 10 speed gear case in the back. Uh, so you can pedal at different speeds, but it has the same 750 watt motor as the tracker. So it's pretty quick. Now the difference is that tracker is a level two e-bike. And what that means is in theory, it should only be assisted up to 20 miles an hour so you can ride it, quote, everywhere. In actuality, the race mode goes up to 36 miles an hour, which changes the game, but it's sort of a technicality that most people will overlook, rightly so. This is a level three bike. So they advertise the top speed 28 miles an hour. Right now, cruising at 21. This bike also has a front suspension, which is why I know that bike would be way better if it had one too. Um, you really do not have to pedal very hard at all for this thing to give you the full juice. If you have it on mode five, which I was on four, go to mode five now, you can pedal it at like any speed. You pedal it super, super slow, and it'll give you the full juice. Uh, they say 20 to 60 mile range on this bike, uh, but you can see visually that the battery is smaller than uh, the tracker. So it's really, if you're on the battery, it's gonna be closer to the 20 than the 60. Conversely, you can turn down the regen quite a bit, uh, take over more of the pedaling by yourself, and you can get probably close to the full 60 out of it, although you're gonna be doing a lot more pedaling yourself. Right now, I'm really letting the battery and the motors do, its, do their work. This is a bigger frame. It's got 29 inch wheels. Um, it's also $5,000, so it is, it is a little expensive, but <laughs> it's also very, very fast. <coughs> and it's comfortable. And really, you don't have to do much work. My legs are moving very slowly and I'm getting the full juice. <laughs> You even really do have to turn down the power sometimes because it does give you a little too much. Uh, I believe I mentioned the other bike, the Tracker, is 79 pounds and this is 53 pounds, which could be a major, major difference if you have to load this thing on or off a car, in or out of an apartment, in and out of the back of a truck. Um, those 27 pounds difference, 26 pounds difference, are extremely significant when we're talking about lifting good brakes, lifting a bicycle. You get a uh, battery gauge, a speedometer, power gauge. Of course, you have LED headlights and tail lights. Uh, I do find it actually really neat that your headlights and tail lights are uh, dark sensing, which I think is really, really cool. So anyway, that's the gist of it. Hey, Timmy, pull it over. Um, that's the gist of it. These vintage electric bikes are really cool. Are they the cheapest electric bicycles you can buy? Certainly not. There are much less stylish, much more practical applications that will probably get you to work just as well. But uh, these are both on the very fast end of what you can buy in the consumer space, and they're also on the very um, nice, beautiful end of what you can buy in this consumer space as well. They are really, really nicely made, heavy-duty items that will uh, that seem like they're designed to last. So shout out to Vintage Electric for letting me have these things for a couple weeks uh, to play with. And uh, thanks for you for watching my not a car video, and I'll see you next time.